Histograms are one of the most foundational tools for visualization. They allow us to look at populations of numerical data and basically realize how they're distributed. Despite how common they are, it's actually quite easy to bamboozle someone with one. This is mostly because data in histograms is binned, and how you select those bins can really trick people. As a case study, let's look at undergraduate acceptance rates in the US. Now, standard operating procedure is to use nicely spaced linear bins. This generates an honest representation of how picky every school in the country is. Now, there's some schools that you could have gotten into had you really tried. No, I believe you stop yelling at me. But the majority of schools have anywhere between a 60% and 100% acceptance rate. So yeah, this gives us a nice summary of just how picky higher learning institutions are in America. And, you know, looks like the story's over. Pack it up, boys, we're done. Just kidding, no way, it's never this easy. It's always miserable, and I'll tell you why. There are some examples where we won't actually want just normal, evenly spaced uniform bins. There's a lot of phenomena that don't really lend themselves to that sort of explanation. Take for instance the distribution of US firm sizes. Now there's a lot of really teeny tiny companies out there, and there's a few big ones. Plotting this on a linear x-axis would obscure a lot of the data because it obeys essentially a power law distribution. Having those logarithmically spaced bins allows us to tease out just how firms in the US are distributed. All right, if we swap the way we plotted both those right now, we have a log axis for the school acceptance rates and we have a linear axis for the firm sizes, we see that both of them are kind of distorted. But I really want to draw attention to that linear axis on the firm size graph because frankly, it just makes the whole thing look like a flat line with one peak. That's all you can see. And now that's useless. Basically, it shows you one thing and one thing only, that there's a lot of small firms. You can't really see anything else. So basically, we see that there's a, there's a variety of reasons why you'd want to plot one way or the other. And it really depends on the data, right? Taking a counter example, look, a uniform distribution, the exact same data plotted two ways looks totally different with linear log bins. I mean, this is like bucko, whoa, what, look at this, it's crazy, who knows? Gamma distribution, same story, I mean, okay, look, how should it look? I mean, you decide, I don't know, you tell me. I don't know how it's supposed to look, but this is like one thing. All right, finally, another classic example of power lot. All right, the city sizes of the world. Uh, there's lots of small cities, not many big ones, and how you want that to look is up to you. You choose your own adventure in this mystery world. You know, you decide. All right, so clearly I've just confused all of you with all of this. Um, you no longer know what's real. Your reality is distorted. You're ungrounded. You're untethered. What's the takeaway? All right, so first of all, if you're consuming things, if you're looking at visualizations, be vigilant. Don't be a lazy bones. Don't be a couch potato. Got to do your due diligence and see how is this person playing me? Because they are. They're playing you. I mean, stay woke. Get red pilled. Open that third eye because everyone's trying to deceive you all the time. Secondly, if you're making something, don't be some toy ass punk. Be like responsible with how you're presenting your data and draw attention to how you're using your axes because that's really what matters. All right, thank you all very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, you're very sweet and thank you. If this wasn't enough fun for you, you can follow the links in the description for interactive versions of these graphs and all the data and code used to make them. Till next time.